Can you stand with me as we begin our worship? Amen. Aren't you glad you're in the house of the Lord? Amen. Can we just, can we just, can we just, can we just focus on the Lord? Amen. Lift our hearts, lift our voices. Raise a song of worship in your heart. Amen. This is the same God that brought you through the week. The God that part the Red Sea in so many of your situations. He took care of things that you did not even know about. He fights your battles. He keeps your household. His mercies are new every morning. Even though you are not faithful, he is faithful. Amen. We all know the God that we serve. So just worship him. Give him praise. Give him thanks. glorify you. We magnify your holy and matchless and wonderful name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you lift Hallelujah. your voices? Can you lift your hands in praise? We, we just want to give him thanks for you, who he is, what he has done for us. Mighty master, mighty Lord, we thank you for keeping us through the week. Holy Lord, we thank you for bringing us safely here today. As we come together, Lord, you say where two or three are gathered. Father, it's your time, O oh Holy God, your Amen. name, your goodness, your mercies. Father, they are new, new every morning. We thank you for this hour, this time where we are about to worship you, O oh Holy God. We thank you for those that are on their way. We give you all the praise and all the honor and all the glory. We lift up the worship team, Father, as they sing praises unto you. Father, we thank you for the man of God. As you bless his household, Father, that word that you have put on his lips this morning, that word that will reach you where at the point of your need. Father, we thank you. We give you all the praise and we give you all the honor and we give you all the glory. Can we give the, the Jesus a round of applause, please? Amen. Amen. Can you join with me as we declare our covenant scripture? It's taken from Joshua 1, 5, and it reads, There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Joshua 1, 5. And we know our declaration scripture for 2022, and it reads from John 1, 16, and of his fullness have all we receive and grace for grace. Just give Jesus another round of applause. He's done so much for us. Amen. So we just want to ask the worship team to join us this evening. This morning, sorry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We bless the name of Jesus this morning. God, we're grateful for your correction this morning. We're thankful for your protection, and we want to ask for your direction, God. We give you praise, God, and we thank you because you keep Hallelujah. doing it again and again and again and again. You're faithful, God. And we just thank you for this this morning, dear Heavenly Father. We come before you with a grateful heart. May we never waver, God. You are faithful, God. We thank you, God. We give you glory. Let's worship him this morning. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We give you glory, oh God. Get your hearts ready for worship this morning. Ah, the angels bow before your throne. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get your hearts ready for worship. Angels bow before your throne. Miracles happen in your name. What a mighty God you are. Hallelujah. Angels bow before your throne. Miracles happen in your name. What a mighty God you are. Said angels bow before your 
throne. Miracles happen in your name. What a mighty God you are. Let's sing that choir. Angels bow before your throne. Angels bow before your throne. Miracles happen in your name. What a mighty God you are. What a mighty God you are. Angels bow before your throne. Angels bow before your throne. Miracles happen in your name. What a mighty God.
I'm going to bless the living God. I'm going to bless you because you reign. Oh, God, you reign. You reign, reign. Zion King. Say, God, oh, God, oh, you are mighty on your throne. And my God, you reign. You are on head, you are Zion King. God, oh, God, oh.
Mission Zion King. My God sits and he rules from his throne. He rules over the affairs of man. My God, you ancient Zion King. Kadosh, Kadosh, what a mighty God we serve. My God, Jesus. You are worthy. Let me just give a one minute testimony. I am presently going through some things that physically you should not allow me to stand here and give God praise. But the devil is a liar. He is the doer of good things. And he is going to turn this whole situation around. I thank him before he do it. Because I know he will do it. His promises are yea and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He is the doer of good. Hallelujah. Just clap your hands for this one. On
Come and do what only you can do. Hallelujah. 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 We bless, bless your name. name. We Hallelujah. worship you, Lord. We worship you. Hallelujah. You are the mighty Amen. God. Amen. Hallelujah. As we continue in worship, you can comfortably have your seats. Amen. Aren't you glad you came this morning? Amen. Amen. Just to be in the presence of the Lord, to worship, to give him thanks. Amen. As we are accustomed, you know we have some announcements for you. So if we are ready, and we know that you are really happy to be here, uh, do we have anyone worshiping with us for the very first time? It's the first time that you've come through the doors of City of Freedom. Can I ask you to stand if it's your first time? Right, Amen. Yeah. Amen. Come on, we can do better than that. Come on. We can do better than that. Giving them a City of Freedom welcome. We are glad you took the time to come. We are happy that you're here. We just want to say that we love you. We bless your holy name, O holy Lord. We thank you for their lives. We thank you for their presence. Really, really appreciate you coming this morning. Amen. So someone will speak with you after. Can you meet with Sister Marissa, Sister Sharon, that lady that just raised her hand there. You can re meet with her in the corner there after service. Amen. Is that okay? We love you. Thank you for coming. You can have your seat. Give them a round of applause again. Amen. We have a few announcements that we really want to share with you, so just direct your attention to the screen and follow on. Of truth. Sit back and relax just before you go to bed. Then, after that great session, we are back in the sanctuary every Wednesday at 6 p.m. with our moment of truth. Every Fridays, look forward to our restoration and prayer meeting via Zoom at 9 p.m. Every Sunday at 10 a.m., we are back in the sanctuary for our normal service. Then, we have our all-night prayer on October 28th, The Bone Shall Rise Again, Ezekiel 37. Our annual convention is around the corner. Write these dates down! the 19th and 20th. You are encouraged to make your pledges any amount you can give. All the proceeds will be handled by Sister Keisha. Tuesday prayer in the sanctuary from 12 noon to 1 p.m. One hour we are possessing the gates of the enemy. Genesis 22, 17.
you encourage to make your pleasures any among you can give. All that you see to be handled by Sister Keisha. Tuesday prayer in the sanctuary is not only to my baby. One hour for the assessment of the special annual Genesis 22 17. Amen. As we have all our notes, we just have a couple additional announcements. Uh, we are still uh, looking for persons uh, for the worship team. You are asked to meet with Pastor Vashti, but the twist it now is that we are also encouraging the men. We are inviting the men to join the worship team, especially, especially if you can play an instrument. You know, we really like you to join. Uh, meet with Sister Vashti afterwards once you are interested. We have one other major item. We would like to tell you that we have our Christmas dinner coming up. I'll, I'll ask uh, Deaconess Keisha to come and uh, Kezia to give me the, to give you all the details. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Nice seeing all these beautiful faces this morning, amen? amen. On, on Friday, 16th December, we'll be having our annual Christmas dinner. It will be in-house. We know because of what was going on globally, we didn't have it for the past two years. So we are having it this year, amen? Amen. 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 It will be $200 per person. Forms will be distributed. Well, it will be sent online a link, just as we did for the, reach, the, the retreat family day. The same thing will happen. The forms will be posted by this evening on the members forum. For those who are unable to access the form though, please meet with Sister Keisha and you will get a hard copy form to fill out and give back to her. But we encourage the online, it's easier to collate. And the reason being, we want to ascertain who will be attending so we can know for sure and move forward, amen? amen. So the date will be Friday the... 16th and the cost is? $200. $200 per person, thank you. <laughs> the time will be... We will post it on the forum so you'll see all the other details that you need to know. And if you have any questions, you can also meet with myself, Deacon Ellis, Deacon Sally, or Sister Keisha, Sister Verna, and we will give you any information that you may need. Amen? Amen. Thank, you. Amen. Thank God for fellowship. Amen. Amen? Thank God that we can come together at a time to just be in each other's presence, share a nice, warm uh, welcome, a nice, warm word to each other. Amen? Amen? But we've had a week gone, and I know that God has done something really, really fantastic in all of our lives, but there may be someone who really wants to share something this morning, something that really moved you, that you cannot keep. Uh, anyone want to share a testimony this morning? Pretty brief. Amen. <laughs> Sister Perman. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I really want to give God all the praise, the honor, and glory. Yes. Seeing me here today. It's about a month now. I'm 64 years wow. old, and I thank God. Amen. Because we had to gain praise. Yes. And why I'm saying that, at this age, I never had no accident, emergency, well, I mean, operation, nothing. Amen. But we don't know when time comes, when we're going down in age, what we have. I don't know if you all know about shingles or shingles or whatever the name is. And I had it. I came to church, pastor prayed for me the Wednesday. And the Thursday, well, pastor say, walk around, because something that walk around, we walked around, we pray, and thing. Thursday, when I get up, all you was to me, so I said, well, apparently, I might be need glasses. So I will check the doctor. So the next day, I went to the doctor, and I went, Arima, 
wise and our remorse said, oh, my time come. Sometimes I will go in the washroom. I went in the washroom, come out, wash in my face. This was like, what happened? Because all here was like water buttons. And you know when they come in, the nurse will check here. They say, yeah, fresh, everything good. And when I reach into the doctor, the doctor like, what am to here? All this, I said, I don't know. Then she told me, well, it's shingles. You know everybody. And I like, Lord, is this just so? But making a long story short, you know, I call my friend, we call normally let's come to church. And she said, what happened? And I show she. So when she reached in church, she showed past and past. And I was like, but you still pray for me, and I really want to thank God. It's not an easy thing. I go through this, lying down on the ground for 20 days or 25 days. Me, God, no husband, no children, but God. That, <laughs> hallelujah, that pain wasn't easy because it's coming up here and all here and my eyes just closing down. It gave a mark here, my eyes just closing down. And I like, my children say, what happened? I can't sleep with nobody because everybody feel well I think, but it's not a catching thing, you don't catch it so. One box of the tablet is five, it's $490. Because my daughter in law, she's um, a nurse. And I got two boxes. She buy had was to buy the ointment. The ointment was $60. And she tell me I have to take all them tablets, four tablets, five times a day. And the box have five packs in it. So you know how much tablets. Because I see about a, a lady who has choked. And to see she taking tablets, and now so my tablet, and they tell him I have to finish that. But tell you, see here, lying down, me and God. Fruit, me and God, when you're here going, mm -hmm. everybody else sleeping, but me and God, it wasn't easy. It's not an easy time. But thank God he pulled me through. I give him God. All the praise, because when Pastor had thing here all night, I wanted to come back and come. I talked to Pastor. I said, Pastor, pray for me. So Wednesday night I was here, and Pastor said some things. And on the ground there, it's not an easy thing. People try and turn to God. Let your children know about God. Don't study about no children, husband, or what? Focus on God. Because he is our healer, he is our provider. I in a class with pastor, we baptized and I in a class. And why is I there? I said, I study in the class. And the Lord was saying, why worry? Why worry? And when I came Wednesday, I said, pastor, Apostle, oh yeah, same apostle. You know the class, the and I study. Yeah, apostle, why worry? You? Relax yourself. So that to show you, God is an awesome God, and we have to focus on God because I tell you, we focus on one thing, and we have to really come to know God, and not because who ain't like this, who like no sister. No, brother. Love one another, despite of what? Because right now, mm, God is our own. And I really want to thank Apostle and his wife, Pastor. I know they were spirit, and I want to. I want to thank her. <laughs> because she make him so. As a friend, yes, not now. We never vex. But I really want to thank. And people, 
I thank God. He healed me and he continued. I ain't take my tablet yet. And when I take my tablet, I put it. It's there. I walk with it. And we sing it. I ain't singing too much because they know. But the devil is a liar. So I want to give God all the praise. Amen. A God that does only what he can do. He heals you. Amen. He touches you. Amen. And we really want to thank God for those of you who are not yet encouraged the Tuesday service, Wednesday service, you know, come out, um, join with us. And it's not us. Come in because you are a part of the church. So it's not a separation. Amen. So just want to add one more quick announcement. Um, did we recall that Dominion City is having their uh, Thanksgiving service on the 13th of November? Amen. And we ask that those of you who are interested in going down, you just indicate to either myself or Deacon Sally. Uh, our next branch. Our next branch. Oh, okay. Our next branch is having their Thanksgiving service on the 13th. <laughs> our Thanksgiving service on the 13th. Amen? So it's our. Amen? So on the 13th, those of you who are interested in going down, just let us know, and we'll um, give you that directions and the arrangement. So again, can you stand with me, please? Amen. Now we started in worship. And we're going to continue in worship. Amen. And most importantly, to receive that word. So open your hearts as we receive that which God has laid on the heart of the man of God, Apostle Kenneth Ocherica. Amen. Somebody lift up your two hands and let's pray. Father, Lord, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity and privilege to be in your presence once again. It is not of he that will it or he that run it, but it's of you that show it mercy. Lord, we never deserve this privilege of seeing a day like this, but your mercy have made it available for us. Lord, if you are counting on faithful people, how sure that we are among those that is faithful. But your blood have qualified us to be faithful in your presence. Lord, we thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for our family. Thank you for everyone. Thank you for people watching online. And we ask that the spirit of the living God will do what only him can do. Touch every one of us in the name of Jesus. Thank you for our newcomers, and we pray that none of them will live here the same way they came. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And let everybody say, Amen. Amen. You may comfortably have your seat. God bless you. Looking at the part two of uh, living for God. Somebody say living for God. Amen. We are in the season where men live for themselves and they live for what they can get, and they live for what they can achieve, and not living for God. Last week, we looked at some certain scriptures, how a man can live for God. And we look at the book of Romans chapter 14, verse 8. Romans chapter 14, verse 8. We're just trying to summarize before I go to part 2. So that's your mind and your spirit will be connected from last week. Romans chapter 14, verse 8. And he says, For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are, we are, we are. So nothing ever separates us. Whether we live, whether we die, we are of the Lord. So quit means when you are for yourself, you are wrong. Whether we live, whether we are alive, whatever we do, we are the Lord. We are the Lord. Galatians chapter 1 verse 10, as we look at it last week, Galatians chapter 1 verse 10. And we say that a lot of people are alive today. They live 
the way they want because they totally misunderstand or misunderstood life. They totally misunderstand why they are alive. So that is why they are living the way they live. And Galatians chapter 1 verse 10 says, For do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to do what? Please men. For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of what? Of God. And we find out in the season that we are, people want to look at somebody to serve God. Do you look at the person to go to work? Come on, stop giving some silly excuse and silly madness. Do you, do, have you ever looked at me to go to your work? This is our excuses that have no reasons. Excuses of failures. Do you look at me to eat? How many times have you looked at me to travel where you go and they never tell me? Am I speaking to somebody today? Come on! This is what people want to give excuse because they are not ready. They don't want to walk. You want to look at somebody to, 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 to serve God. Did I create you? Did I die for you? You want to look for somebody to serve God, but you never look at that person to go to work. You never look at that person to eat, to do your own thing. You don't look for nobody. You know how to get it what? Done. Why are you looking for somebody to make you get it done? So you stop looking at men. There are people when they don't get praise in what they do, they get angry. Because you want men to praise you. Don't praise me, I don't want your praise. Let God tell me, well done my servant. That's all just I need, that's all we must need. Because Bible says that anyone, give me the book of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Hebrew 11, verse 6. Let's look at this. Hebrew 11, verse 6. Hebrews 11, verse 6. But without faith, it is what? Impossible to do what? Please go. For he that cometh to God, he didn't, he didn't say he that cometh the apostle. Stop deceiving yourself and be real. He didn't say he that cometh to bishop. Or he that cometh to pastor. He said he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. When your focus is on God, you don't see how others serve God. <laughs> you didn't hear it, hear it again. When your focus is on God, how others serve God is not your business. Because you are a man of excuse. So that is the reason why you always peep at people. To see how they don't do it wrong so that you have your own excuse to serve. So we look at the question we say, why we are on earth to live for God? For two reasons. Three of us. That was last week. We look at the book of Isaiah chapter 43 verse 21. Isaiah 43 verse 21. We say that God formed us for himself in order for us to live for him. Three of us. That's one of the, um, so we said last week, God formed us. He said, these people have I formed for myself. They shall do what? Show forth my my praise. I fought them for myself. And the question was asked, have you seen 
where somebody buy a thing or form something for himself, and what he formed for himself decided to do his own, it doesn't work. It does not work. You go and buy a shoe in the market, and all of a sudden, your shoe tell you, hear me. Your shoe will tell you, hear me, me going. Shoe, I bought you for my service. So wherever I want you to go, you do what? You go. That is it. And one of the things that church is now having what they call mental perversion. Because people are not living by what they hear from the worldly people. Not what the scripture said. How they should live. So their mentality has been what? Tampered by the spirit of the world. And we look at number two. We say Jesus died for us so that we can live for God. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 15. Jesus died for us that we to do what? Live for God. And that he died, somebody say for all. So don't tell me it's for pastors. You see, you have no reason. Somebody say, I have no excuse. Excuse is being diminished here, no excuse. Don't live by excuse. Because a man of excuse is a man of failure. Stop failing. They, they, which live should not, should not henceforth live for, talk now, for them, but unto him which died for them and do what? Wrote for them. So when you are taught and everything you do are just for you and for you, you need deliverance. You have a problem. When anything is being taught, is being revolved around you or centered around you, the problem is there. You have a problem. And it's all about you. It's all about what you want. What do you really want? You don't even know what you want. Why can't you go to God and know what you need? You have been wanting all you want all these years, and you know you're not making it right. Is it because... When we put on our nice clothes and we come to church, three of us, everybody smiled. Do you know the secret tears that many of us shared in the night? Yes. Because of our wrongs? Follow me. Please, let's be real. Do you know secret tears that we share in the night? We cried in the night. Do you know many of us know the mark of ceiling in their house? If you call them now, how many ceilings do you have? They will tell you seven. They will tell you ten. They will tell you where they have dent in the, in the deck. In their house. Why? Because every night you are looking. Why? You are not looking at it because of the future tomorrow, but you are looking at it because of the past. One problem or the other, one regret, one mistake or the other that you have made. So when we look at those things, we are supposed to look forward for what God say in our life. So we ask a question. The question say, the question is what it means to live for God. What it means to live for God. Number one, we say, live a life that's centered on God. You was here last week, you understand that? Number two, we say, live by his principle and precepts or his dictate. May the Lord dictate to you in things you do. May the Lord dictate to you how you dress. May the Lord dictate to you how you talk. Stop saying, that is how I feel. If that is how you feel, sometimes you feel stupid and you talk stupid. You must be calculative. You must calculate what you say. Don't say that's how you feel. Because if everybody say how they feel, you cannot even, you can't make it in life. So I say, that's, that's how I feel. Anytime people start using the word, that is how I feel, cut them off. Because they can spoil something for you. That is how I feel. No, I don't know how problem or how you feel. Feel it in your own house, not church. <laughs> we move by the feel, by the leading of the Holy Ghost, not how you feel. Sorry. 
We move by the leading of the church, of the word of God, not how you feel. You are carnal, mental Thinking or feeling has nothing to move church to the next level. But instead, it will bring discouragement and bring in church down. We Bible say as many that are led by the Spirit of God, not how you feel. Now, we're not talking because it's not, we're talking because we're dealing on what? Scripture. As many that are led by the Spirit of God, so you must be led by the Spirit to speak. Don't let by devil to speak. Let God dictate what you say. Number three, live to bring honor and glory to his name. Does people come to church because of you or people doesn't come to church? They say because of you. Number four, live with kingdom character and lifestyle. Kingdom character is not only when you enter into the door. Kingdom character must be outside. Where people will see you, see your life, and they will glorify the name of the Lord. Number five, we deal on living to show forth his praise. God created you for you to show forth his word. His praise. And we go to the book of Malachi chapter 3, verse 17. Malachi chapter 3, verse 17. Before we go to number 6. Malachi 3, 17 and 18. And he said, and, and they shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts. In that day, when I make up my jewelry, and I will spare them as a man is spared his own son that do what? That severed him. Next verse. They, then shall you return and do what? And discern between the righteous and the what? The wicked. Between him that serveth God and him that serve him not. There must be what difference. There must be what something between the righteous and the wicked. Something must show this person go to church. Do you know that some before when you see a sister that go to church, you know she go to church. When you see a sister, you a brother, you don't need no prophet to tell you they go to church. You find out today, men approach women anyhow. Before a man can approach a sister going to church, they are afraid of you. But it's not now. They call you family anyhow. Tell you how sexy you look anyhow. Why? Because you seduce them. No man can tell you you are sexy if you are not seducing the man. Am I speaking to someone? Eh? You may not like it. Heaven, heaven is quiet now. Heaven is what? Quiet. No man can call you sexy if you are not seducing him. There is something he saw that moved him. You looking at Holy Ghost filled sister walking on the street. You will be afraid to open your mouth. Because if you open it and how that mouth will disfigure. If you open it and how you're in trouble. Even brothers. Even brothers. I'm not talking only sisters. Even brothers. Don't come to church and wear suits. But in the streets, your pants is on, at the back of your bottom. Don't come to church and wear suits. But when you're outside, you have secrets. And you have beer stag in your mouth. There must, people must discern, somebody not hearing me, people must discern between the wicked and the world and the righteous. Don't tell me, pastor, don't judge me. Uh, God, no. Who told you God, no? 
If people have never known, God doesn't know anything. By their fruits, which I do all know. If you never show any fruit that people see and thank God, sister, you are a failure in the kingdom. Don't tell me God know. So there must be a difference between. And you know, I say something, people talk about reputation, reputation, reputation. I don't believe in reputation. You must be real. Because your reputation is that you work in bank. You must dress well and clothe yourself. But after bank work, you dress like a harlot. Who are you representing? There is no reputation there. You carry the spirit of nakedness inside you. So number six, could you write? Living on assignment for God. Living on assignment for God. First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 16. Living on assignment for God. Look at what Paul said. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid upon me. Yet, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. This is a man that, are, that have a comprehensive insight of God's assignment. You must live on assignment for God. Assignment for the kingdom. So winning assignment, kingdom service assignment. Acts chapter 9, verse 6. Acts 9, verse 6. Paul said, if I did not preach this gospel, let cause be unto me. And the Bible say, and he trembling and astonished, say, Lord, Lord. What will thou have me to do? How many of us have asked God that question in church? Do you know one of the worst deception of the devil is telling you you come to church and you sit down and you listen to the word of God that you have done the will of God. That is the deception of the enemy. <laughs> One of the greatest deception of the enemy is telling you you came to church, the city know your name. You feed the girl. That's the deception of the enemy. Bible say from hence them all, everyone, all, everyone, live for God. That the deception of the enemy. When God met Paul on his way to Damascus, we all know the story. What happened to him? When God visited him, he became blind. Even in blindness, I want you to get this. Even in blindness, he was asking God, what will you have me? A man who cannot see. That is in blindness, asking God, what will you have me to do? But we that have eyes can ask. He asking God, what will you have me to do? We sit down and hear men and women that tell you about church and say this and this to discourage you. But you never know that the people are walking to increase the kingdom of hell. They are working, preaching, to do what? Increase the kingdom of hell. Why? To decrease the kingdom of God. A blind man 
in his situation, say, God, listen, I don't do, I don't go into business. I can't walk. What do I do? Tell me. All this business, what's happening now? What do you want me to do? Just tell me, I don't want no time. Don't stop wasting my time. You make me blind, no problem. What do you want me to do? Don't waste my time in this blindness. <laughs> oh, you have arrested me on the way. Thank God for the arrest. What do you want me to do? Tell me. I don't stop. I don't, I'm, don't, I'm Listen, I am, a, I am an active man. Are you hearing me? I am not a lazy man. I am on my way. I'm going to a mission. You stop me here. What mission are you giving me? Have you forgotten that every one of you was on the mission? You want me to tell you your mission? No. All right, thank God you, want, you don't want me to. See, because if I say that, there will be a problem in church now. Every one of us was on a mission. Either going to destroy a man, destroy a woman, destroy a home, destroy one thing or the other, two of us. Say amen. We are on a mission, and on our way, God did what? Arrested us. When God arrested you, what was the arrest bond? What? God, you arrest me. You divert my attention from my mission. What mission do you have for me? All right, what commission do you have for me? We can't be living like this. When people are dying every day. Stop crying when people die. Sometimes you contributed to their death. We contribute to their death. Because if you cannot be able to preach to that person, to accept Christ, when you die, you contribute to it. And um, genuine encounter make a man want to live his life for God. When you have genuine encounter, that is why I told you people sometimes, healing is not gospel. Bread and butter is not gospel. Prosperity and all this is are not gospel. But they are needed. If you say tomorrow is a healing school in this place, do you know how many people that will come? What are they coming for? They're coming for healing. They're not coming for Christ. Am I speaking to somebody now? They're coming for what? Healing. They're not coming for what? So they have a mentality to be healed. But let me ask you, when you got to heal and end up in hell, did you go to do anything? Hey. When you get healed and you end up in hell, when you get money, even if you want to pray to get 14 husbands, no problem, or 14 wives, no problem. But if you die, did you get anything? But when Christ becomes the focus of the church in preaching Christ, healing takes place. In preaching Christ, people prosper. In preaching Christ, deliverance takes place. When Christ becomes the center, in our mind, in our life, anxiety, worries disappear. When Christ becomes the center of our life, self died. Do you know me? Tell the person, yes, I know you. What's my name, Mr. Dust? I'm Mrs. Dust. In short, if you want to respect the person, Uncle Dust. Tell the person, Tante Dust. You will end it. So Paul 
asked him, he said, what will you have me to do for you? The question I want to ask you today is this. How many people escape hell for heaven because of you? Christian. You see in this church, I am not going to put a title on any man again if the man does not have passion to win soul. If the man have no passion to win soul, the man can never walk. He always want to be inside for you to go and bring for him to mess up. It ain't working. You must go outside there and expose yourself. The most. And you know, there is this teaching that I've met people. Eh? It's better when you come to church, you just sit down, you know. Because when you're going into commitment, the devil will be what? Attacking you. You never hear that? Give me that, give me that water. Give me that water. Make sure you close it well. Good. You come. You come. Stand there. You stand here. You come. Stand there. Follow me. In a football, I said stand there. In a football match, they have a lot of what? Spectators. Two of us. Okay, look at the spectators. They're watching. We are in the field, right? In a place where you have more than 22,000 people, they are watching 22 players, 22 people. <laughs> Three of us, 22 people, they are watching playing football. In these 22 people, they have opponents. Three of us. So which means, you that is there is not active, but you are watching what's going on. You are in your house watching, paying money for them playing. Anytime you watch football, you pay money, you pay them. You, know that? you don't know that? Look at you. Anytime you watch football, you contribute money to Ronaldo. So let's look at this. So, four of us are in the pitch, three of us. But even in the pitch, there are people that carry the assignment. All right, when I, when I kick this ball, run to him. Go that side and watch me. All right, everybody watch. There is it. Why is he running? <laughs> he carries the ball. There is something he had. No demon, no demon want to attack somebody that is useless in life. They attack you because of the assignment in you. If you have no assignment, nothing. You have no use. God bless you, sir. Why are you living a life without assignment? Want to come to church and sit down? You can be in church without assignment. Even in the pitch. It's not everybody in the pitch that have an assignment. Your assignment comes as soon as the ball comes to you. Somebody will come to mark you. When there is no ball, there is nobody. They have come to announce to you that the enemy attack you because of the assignment that you carry. 
You need to be thanking God. God, I thank you for the assignment that I carry. Jesus said something. In the book of John chapter 4 verse 34. John 34, John 4, 34. Jesus said something. Jesus said unto them, my meat, my assignment. My meat, my assignment. My meat, my assignment. Is to do the will of him that did what? Sent me to do what? Finish. His work. On the, our Wednesday, we, we have a topic we have been dealing since over, get it to one month now. Better your best. And we say something, there is a work to be done. The finishing work of redemption was at the cross. But there are people waiting for your manifestation. Until you manifest, they ain't coming to church. Until you manifest, they can never change. Jesus said, greater was than this, that you shall do. Because I have come back to heaven, but you are the one here. Why are you living a life without assignment? When you live for God, you'll be more focused in his assignment. I want you to know, wife is good, husband is good, car is good, everything is good, but those things will come and go. As a sister gave a testimony, no husband was there. When the pain, he was going through the pain. But who was there? Who was there? Jesus. Everything. Nothing counts. Except what you did for God. Nothing. Nothing. Count except what you did for him. Cars, this thing, it never counts. It doesn't count. There was a man called Solomon. In all his wealth, in all his miserable life, he concluded. <laughs> he checked wealth, checked miserable, checked riches, checked poor. You know what he says? He said, vanity upon vanity. He checked all of them, balanced it. He balanced the equation. He balanced the equation, bring out the equilibrium. And he make a declaration. Kai, God help me. And he said, the vanity upon vanity is what? Is vanity. We are in the season. We refuse to live for ourselves. I remember when we was born again, we enter bus to travel, going nowhere, just because we want to preach. <laughs> Look at you. Enter bus, no destination. Just because I have passion, I want to preach. That's why I enter the bus. But today, we're looking for altar to preach. We don't, we're not looking for no platform outside. Philippians chapter 1, verse 27. Philippians 1, 27. He said, only let your conversation. Be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. That whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your word, affairs, that ye stand fast 
in one spirit. That yes, stand fast in what? One spirit. With one mind. Striving together for the faith. For the faith of the gospel. Give me verse 23. Of that. Give me verse 23. Ephesians 1.23. Philippians, sorry. Philippians 123. That's why I said 23. I love this scripture. Strive together for the faith of the gospel. Strive together. For I am in strain. Between the two what? Having a desire to depart and to be with Christ. We it is what kapale kapotalaba. We it far better. Somebody, can I tell you? You must come to that opinion today. You must come to that point where you choose where to be. We all these things we are pursuing, we are pursuing them, and we even getting them. Can I ask you a question here now? Upon all you have and all you have been working, many of you started working at 13 years, 14, 15, 16, and you are still working. Why are you still working? Because it's never enough. You want more. Hello? <laughs> you want more. It is never enough. Number seven. Living with eternity in view. Every believer must live with all. Eternity we are in view. Stop living like a man without destination. You must live your life as a man that has what? Destination. After here, I am going somewhere. If you live you must live with eternity in view. Living with eternity consciousness. Living with the end in view. Living and knowing that life does not end here. And there is life after this life. Mark 8, verse 36. Mark 8, verse 36. For what shall it profit thou man? What shall it profit to that man, to that woman? If he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul. You know, this scripture has brought me to the place which I understand that your soul is bigger, more valued, more than the world. All we walk and we're looking for is to gain the whole of this world. But can I tell you, if they give you 20 million today, sister, you need more. <laughs> what shall it profit you as a man? Romans chapter 14. Give me verse 12. Romans 14, verse 12. Remember, 
that whatsoever you are doing here, what counts, what counts is what you do for him. So then every one of all shall give account of himself. Look at you that looking for looking at somebody to serve God. That day you say, uh, God, hear me now. You know what I'm telling you? Um, um, that brother, um, that is why I ain't serve God well. <laughs> the, I, I know the brother, he, he does come to church and smoke. And that is the reason why <laughs> me. And some people will tell you, hey, Apostle, you see me? These church people, them ten, me, no problem. Keep on saying church people, them ten. When you appear before God, you tell him, church people, them ten. <laughs> hey, you see me? Me, I, I, me want no hypocrite. Me, no hypocrite. And that's what I'm going to You are number one hypocrite if you don't want to go to church. Because hypocrite means you know the right thing and you are not doing it. So you don't go to church because there's people doing you wrong. You, know, you are number one hypocrite. And any church you go become hypocrite because you are there. <laughs> any church you eventually enter, come to be a hypocrite church because number one hypocrite have entered here. So you pollute them with hypocrisy. Yeah. Let us know at the end we have account to give. And did you know one thing I was thinking of? What account? Number one, how did you carry my assignments? Ah, uh, how did you carry the assignment? Not how many cars you bought, not how many buildings. Even right now, buildings are killing people. Go to Nigeria right now, big men, they have lost their houses and their cars in flood. And even COVID they never teach anybody anything. That COVID even brought the big, the rich to it. And the, there are some rich men that for that two years, all of them were hiding inside that they couldn't come out upon all their money. When they call for grocery, in the, whatever you give them, they take. Are you hearing me? If they say, eh, we, we want uh, pumpkin seed and punk city. If you bring the one that is rotten, they must take it. They have no choice to do what? To take it because that is a delivery. He brought them to nothing. None of them could be able to fly out and fly in. A lot of them were suffocated in their house, going through their depression and oppression and shuns inside it. All of them was going through it. The poor were suffering. Them were suffering. Your own might be suffering of not having food. Their own might be to banker of not flying. Yeah. They live in fear. So you have to know that we have account to give. Live your life where you can give an account. What account? Do you know one of the problems we have in church? People doesn't serve God with trembling. Can I tell you something? <laughs> Come, let's, let's do something. Let's do something. <laughs> let's, do something. <laughs> let's just make it practical. <laughs> have you seen somebody trembling before? You see somebody trembling? When you are trembling, do you have any business to look at what this man doing? <laughs> when you are fear trembling, hello, you don't even care what is by your side. It's because we serve God without trembling. That is the reason why you can be able to see, see. Even when worship is going on, some people eye open so. <laughs> Looking who worshiping and who in worship. What is your business of who not worshiping? Did you come to church to watch it for the person? Keep on being silent. Keep 
pump be internet. First Peter chapter four. First Peter chapter four. I'm reading from verse seven to eleven. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and wash unto what? Prayer. Next verse. And above all things, I love this. Above all things. Somebody say all things. All things. Say all things. all things. Have good husband. Good car. Good goodies. Good good do good do good. What did he say? What did he say? What did he say? Means fervent love. Passionate love for one another. Belego bo sakataya. Have a passionate love among yourself. He didn't say skyscraper. Now that he said CEO or MD or DM. He said above all things. Somebody say all things. All things it means all things. Nothing is exempted. All things are what? All things. Have what? Fervent is is a love that even hate cannot restrain. Kapalada, it is a love that even offense can keep you back. Somebody not hearing me. Love that offense can't even stop. They call it fervent love among yourself for charity covered the multitude of sins. Fervent love does not see error. God bless you. She said, Good morning. No granny. Fervent love. Fervent charity. Among, among yourself. Wherever you gather. Are you hearing me? You must show fervent love among yourself. Stand up, stand up, stand up. Please, everybody listen to me. You mad or what? Good. Oh yeah, crucify me. Why would the pastor say you mad or what? <laughs> say that, say that now. Why would the pastor say you mad or what? Oh yeah, throw me stone if you're right. If you never do anything like that before, throw me stone. Right, look at it. You can never throw a stone. Jesus say, cast a stone. If you have no sin in you. Some of us are too righteous that we don't see our wrongs. And that is the reason why you cannot be able to accept others because of their wrong. But you are. You know, your own is not even wrong. Your own is dead. Because when your eyes is being closed to your wrong, it's no more wrong. You become dead. Why? Because you are not seeing it. Because you don't see it again. Love, fervent love, and above all things. Above all things. Charity among yourself. For charity, love, cover. When you hear multitude, you know what? Multitude is talking about sand. A sin that is equal to sand of the shore is what they call multitude. A multitude is where they have thousands of people. So sin is a love. Cover it. Did you know that scripture 
is being talking about for God so loved the world. Somebody not hearing me. That he gave. If God did not love, his eyes would not be closed to our sins. <laughs> it is the love God has for us make his eyes to be closed in our sins for him to send Jesus to save us. It is the love that cover the multitude of all our sins. Say, how long will I remain in this with my children? Let me look away for a way to deliver them. For God so loved the world, he sent. Stop using the word love. The word in your heart can never be love until it's been expressed. Don't tell me I love she. Love must be given until it's been given. They don't call it love. No bell is, is, can be a bell until it's been ring. You can tell it's a bell. I agree, but let me I'll tell you, uh, it's still useless. Because I never hear bagam, 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 bagam. That's what makes it. Next verse. You can see them. God bless you. Next verse. Use hospitality one toward another. Without what? Without what? Look at it. Search yourself. If you carry the spirit of grudging in you. Don't be a witch. That is a character of witches and wizards. You know, we think that witches and wizards is the one that grow wing and fly in the night. Bam, 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 bam. No, there are witches and wizards that even pray in tongue too. Don't be. Stop grudging against one another. Give me next verse. As every man had received the gift, so even so minister the same one to another. Sister, sister, what, did, what gift did you receive? What is your gift you have discovered? And Sammy, stop doing so. What is your gift you have discovered? To do what? I feature, what is your gift you have discovered? To worship God? To sing? Use it and minister to one another. What are your gifts you have discovered? Use it. It is time to use your gift. And stop complaining. Everybody must not have the same gift. If you find out your own, use your own. Use it and do your best. Let everybody see you doing it. And let heaven see you do it. Until heaven see you do it. Until people see you do it. He say, same to one another as good steward of the world, manifold grace of God. Verse 11. If any man, that is when it comes to, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracle of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth. That God in all things, keep palada. Is God being glorified in the gift that I have given to you? You stand up, dear. Watch me. Stand up. Stand up. You stand up. You. Be careful. Are you hearing me? Be careful. Be careful. The way the enemy is pushing you, you will not fail. I pray for you. Are you hearing me? I pray for you that the way enemy pushing you, you will not fail. Be very careful. God said, 
It's time to retrieve your movement. Company need to change because that company have never taken you anywhere. The company keep on bringing you back. It's not lineage. Because no man can be in Christ and stand on lineage. Who born that lineage? Where did the lineage come from? Make up your mind. Every one of us come, with, come from one foolish foundation or the other. Two of us. Two of us. Every one of us come from one stupid foundation or the other. Many of us here, yeah, our father, our father run 13 wives. But today, you are not even running one. And you want to tell me it's foundation. Stop using foundation as a school. Jesus has built a better foundation for you. Foundation to stand that cannot be shaken. Foundation that cannot be moving. That is the foundation you are standing on. Make up your mind. The company you keep determines what accompanies you. Check what the company you keep. Check the company you keep. And you will see what that follows you. Comment and close. I assure you two things. Somebody said two things. Somebody said two things. If you live for God, you live for good. If you live for God, you live for good. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye force, the kingdom of God, and his what? And his righteousness, and and all these things shall be added unto thee. When you magnify God, you magnetize the things of this life. When you magnify God, you will magnetize everything in this life. Have you forgotten that God is the source of everything? When the source speak, everything obey. I hear me. So when you glorify God, you magnetize things of life. Seek ye the force, the kingdom of God, and every other thing shall be added unto thee. Make God the center of attraction or attention in your life. And God will make you a center of attraction to your generation. Let God become the center of your life. And your life will become the center of attraction. Live for God and live good. Until you live for God, you cannot live good. This is, this is not something you tell people. Do you know what it takes to live good? Do you, do you know how many people pay you money to get peace? The peace you have when you go to bed in the night. Father, Lord, I thank you. I give you praise in the name of Jesus. There are men drinking 10 bottles of stag to get it for a moment in the bar. Kabbalah de la basukataya. There are some men finishing one bottle of rum with eyes to get it. But they're not getting it. <laughs> but you get it for free of charge. He said, Father, I thank you for the peace. You never do anything to get it. No money. Do you know what, how many, do you know how much stag is now for many of you that drink? <laughs> 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 eh? 11, 
eleven dollars. Jennifer, come and give me a bonus. <laughs> give me a bonus. You must know. Give me a bonus. <laughs> she said eleven dollars. <laughs> It's eleven dollars. <laughs> I know maybe she don't drink, but you might be around people that drink and say eleven dollars. Because I can't imagine her drinking stars. <laughs> Amen. When you drink it, maybe five to six bottle in a night just to get peace. Half of your pay for the day, gone. And before the month finish, oh God, pressure. <laughs> oh God, pressure. Oh God, oh God pressure. What pre is that the iron pressuring you? All right, let me tell you something. All the young sisters here, hear me and hear me. Do not... Allow any man to be spending money on you without having savings. The day he look back in his account and they didn't see no money in his account and you tell him no, he's coming to kill you. Because you wasted all his destiny. I beg you, don't try that. Don't take no money from no man and you're not ready to marry him. Because the day he look back in account, zero, zero, all I work, gone. And you come in to tell me, you done, I got done anything. <laughs> he would done everything immediately. <laughs> I'm telling you, you might be taking it as a laughing matter. Don't involve yourself there because the only thing I can do, I will come to your funeral and bury you. I can't do more than that. That is just it. Don't go for that. Even if you're coming to spend money for you, stop allowing men to take responsibility as a husband in friendship. Because a man tell you, I love you, does not make him your father and your mother automatically. You must be mad. I love you, no? Uh, I need this. The man become ATM. Become uh, uh, Aru, uh, Aru BC ATM to be punching and be getting money. But one day when you get somebody better, you say, eh, 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 eh. do you know that shoe have size? You will not know that grave will have size too. Be careful. It's a warning. It's a warning. Shoe, you don't know shoe that have class, true? She does have class. But you will not you now know that grave will have class too. We have to be very, very careful in the things we do. Be contented with who you are. Be contented with what you have. Maybe God wants to deliver somebody. That's why this message will come out. You want to set somebody free? I assure you of two things. I said one. Live for God. You live for good. Number two. If you live for God, you will escape the torment of hell forever. Go and ask the rich man what he said. Go and read the Bible, and the rich man will tell you what he saw, his experiences, when he was asking Lazarus, please, I need a drop. This is a rich man that can drink all kind of water, that can drink all kind of bamboo water, that can drink all kind of alkaline and alkaline system water, that can drink all kind of water that can stimulate and sterilize and goodenize the body. Are you hearing me? But the man was in a place seeking for a drop of water. Be careful. A word is enough for a while. 
Know that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, dear wait, to be what? To be what? To be what? Tell your neighbor, be content. A lot of people have lost salvation. A lot of people have ended up today because they are not contented with what they have. Be contented with what you have. Stand up on your feet. What generation are you? The generation that call good evil or the generation that call evil good? Change your mind. Make up your mind. Where we are going have two destinations. The way you live determines where you end up in the two paths. One is internal life. And the next one is Internal domination is a place where that. Do you know one thing? One thing I discovered that place is there is no regret. Because it's not, it's not something you say, I have an opportunity to come out. It's a place that says there is no opportunity to come out. Have you ever found yourself in a very little illness, sickness? They tell you, mm, we'll be giving you medication, but it's uncurable. And all you think is say, so I can live with this pain all the years of my life. But that pain is not just a pain. The real pain is the one you spend in a place where you will not even have opportunity to drink a drop of water. Church, I challenge every one of us that we may live for God. That our life must please God. Our life must please God. Don't be a generation that your mind have changed. Don't be a generation that have torn against God, but be a generation, be a generation that people can look and they will discern. They will discern. Can I tell you something? Start from somewhere. Did you hear what I said? Start from where? Somewhere. Start from somewhere and start growing. Let people start seeing something. Bible says that men will see your good works. It didn't say men will see your prayer. Men will see your good works and they will do what? I need to also sing this song. Let me be where you are. Where's that? The song you sang on Friday. Let me want what you want. Choir, you can help us. You can try, right? God will help you. You can pull it and as you can. Let us sing that song. I want everybody to lift up your two hands. Just lift up your two hands. Be in the mood of worship. Let me want what you want. Oh, my dear Lord. Let me love what, what you, you love. love. Oh, oh, dear Lord. This that is how.
today let me love what you love father separate me from anything that will separate me from your will father let me live the way you design life to be in the name of Jesus, give me the grace to live for the Lord. In this time and in this season, I come against every distraction, 
in my life, in my destiny, in the name of Jesus. Every power, kingdom, assigned to distract me, in the name of Jesus, be destroyed. Be destroyed. Father, give me the heart of love that I may love. Like you. like you. In the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Thank, you, Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 And amen. amen. Put your hands together for Jesus, everyone. Amen. amen. Living for God. You can comfortably have your seats. Amen. So